This is Otaku Station, broadcasting anime analysis to anyone who will listen. We have a basement archive full of an ever-growing collection of anime media. We dig deep into the great anime of the past to give you the context you need to fully appreciate the best this medium has to offer. Let's jam. Welcome to the broadcast. I hope you're having a good day wherever you happen to be right now. This is Otaku Station, where today we'll be talking about episode two of Revolutionary Girl Utna, a remarkable shoujo anime series from the 90s. Uh, now, before we get into that, uh, last time I got some seeds from a passerby, and I've been thinking about these a lot. And I think today I'm going to go and plant these. It feels good to make something of your own, to have something that you're working on and that you're you're making yourself, even if something like seeds aren't necessarily something you can uh, control, but that's part of the process too. Uh, it's exciting to have something of your own. Anyway, that's for later. Uh, before we get into Utna, I do want to give you some more information about its director, Kunihiko Ikohara, who's also a very remarkable man, so let's head down to the research room. All right, let's start talking about Utna's director, the legendary uh, Kunihiko Ikuhara. Now, Ikuhara's made a bunch of anime that are known for being, in a word, weird. And I don't mean that in a bad sense, but we'll get to that. Now, I should also point out the only Ikuhara anime I've seen all the way through are now Revolutionary Girl Utna and Yurikuma Arashi, an anime he made a couple decades after Utna. And if I can say one thing about Ikuhara's work, I'd say he knows he's making anime, if that makes sense. Um, meaning his drawings don't have to be direct representations of consistent characters in their reality. Symbolic things can happen and be shown visually, even if they don't literally happen to the characters in the plot especially because the characters don't exist, and he seems to know this and appreciate this and use this to his benefit. This allows his works to be more metaphorical and or allegorical. Yurikuma, for example, is about love and school life. So even the weird things that happen to the characters are often allegories for what happened to us in school or how we feel about others. They may not literally happen to those characters. And again, the characters don't exist, so that doesn't really matter. F from Ikuhara's perspective, it seems. Utna is also very much like this. Its world is metaphorical and allegorical. I would argue that Ikuhara is giving us in Utna a bunch of symbols, a bunch of imagery for things he's trying to communicate, which we can then assemble into a message. A lot of people don't like that. They feel that that is the director um, giving up on their responsibilities. I don't see it that way. I think Ikohara is operating on a different level. Not a better one, but a different way of operating where he is making his point through the symbols, the drawings that he's putting on screen, or his staff is putting on screen. Um, the point is not, did these things literally happen? Because of course they didn't happen. This doesn't exist. You know, Otori Academy does not actually exist. Instead, we can come to an understanding of deeper truths through the characters and images that Ikuhara is putting on screen. Again, a very different way of telling stories, but one that I think does work in Utna if you can decipher the symbols. So, hope that's useful. 
Welcome back. I hope you found that useful. Quick update. I did go out and find a bit of land right nestled up to the tower that should be perfect for the garden. Great southern exposure. But there is a problem. I found some animal tracks around there as well. Uh, deer tracks. Tons of deer around here. And uh, wolverine tracks. And uh, former is not great for a garden. Latter is not great for me tending that garden. So... Uh, now I've got that to deal with, but before I do deal with that, let's talk about some anime. So let me get John and Steve on the line and we will analyze Utna episode two. Okay, it looks like we've got Steve and John on the line. Everything cool out with you guys this week? Oh yes. Everything's good so far. Glad to hear it. Quiet out here in the woods. Just as everything is good with Utna. I'm kidding, everything is, nothing is ever good with Utna. There's always some crisis. Let us get into it with Utna episode two. Is it significant, and I'm joking because it always is, that Utna does not have the ring on her finger? Oh. Or is that her left hand? That's her left hand. That's her left That's hand. Oh, okay. I think the ring is on the right hand. Let's we'll check that. About them on the horses. Yeah. It's like it, in a competition. There's a, yeah, there's a weird glance between the two of You're them when right. they got their their lances and it's not looking like anthe supporting her you're right um you know what i mean that's that. almost like a, a wind around to line up on anthe yeah on the part of utna yeah so Anth uh, utna has her sort of strong expression yeah you're you're absolutely right that is them facing Anthe's off a, yeah, so I mean, so the prince that we see mm, laying on his back, he yeah. looks like he's waking up. Is he the sleeping prince as opposed to the sleeping princess? Mm. Who knows? Great question. <laughs> yeah, we don't yeah. know. Yeah, so many questions. Yeah, so little. He's so definitely little no one on the student council, like right. very clearly. But yeah, that's interesting. And then. Um, again, they're kind of I mean, facing off here. That's her lining. Yeah, they're lining up on each other. Yeah, yeah, and and that's Utna definitely focused, like war face. Yeah, and then they're flying off. And yeah, that and there's still definitely a kind of competition. Yeah, yeah, definitely competition sense there. That is interesting, huh? Okay. Now I wonder, are they face off against each other, or, or something? Yeah, there's these energized looks at one another, mm -hmm. and then they wheel at each other and then proceed off together. Yeah, is this we're we were at odds for some reason, mm. but we come together to pursue a common end. Right, or yeah, and that's what's trying to show. Or we're at odds and now we are in competition. <clears throat> Could be either one. Yeah, I don't know. Absolutely, huh. interesting. And then to that point, you know, here's the two of them together and then being pulled apart. Now, this seems more that they don't want to be pulled <coughs> apart, but yeah. they're being pulled apart. Mm. And to that point from last time, and then Utna's alone. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Why we have. Talkers. Yeah. Uh, and again, definitely sort of more the what the boy in a shoujo anime would be getting in that. Um but also to that earlier point, a uh, much more of a Sailor Moon kind of expression here on the girls. Mm. Very goofy. Yeah. Note, no reprise of what's happened so far. Yeah. Very good. good. Yeah. Given this is only five years after Sailor Moon, we're like every episode. It's here's the premise. We're going right in. Yeah. Which Utna could have used with a recap. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, of all the anime we've watched, yeah. it's like, could yeah. we please? What's going on? Well, uh, <laughs> therapy. Yeah. Uh, so it's an interesting couple of things here. First, the sort of psychological aspect of her realizing that she needs to get over this guy. Um, also, just the high comedy of, well, the, not really high comedy. <laughs> <laughs> the very over-the-top comedy of the moment uh, but also the theatricality of it right yeah. holding up the book in class and then calling out this thing and nobody's paying any attention to this 
Yeah. I was just, I was gonna say the girl there with the the ponytail. She's just like probably like going, oh god, she's doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs well, coffee yeah. when I have this? Jeez. Yeah. I like the the theatrics of Wakaba, mm. but I'm really so curious as to the Utna walks by her and Wakaba holds the book up. Yeah. And then when she turns around, her entire face is obscured. Yeah. And it's just the book. So she's saying how much she loves it. Is this she her her coping with the problem that she's had, having mm. her letter read out loud and so being so embarrassed. She's hiding her face, but she's also sort of interpreting her emotional experience that she's just had through the, through book. the book. Yeah. And that's why she's covered her face and Utna's looking at this is how I'm interpreting this. This is how I'm coming mm-hmm. through with this. It's through the joy of this reading this book. Yeah. And it's like that's really an interesting kind of maneuver. Because mm-hmm. I was I was afraid for a split second she was gonna pull the book down and her face was going to be blank. Yeah. Like, like she had <laughs> suppressed her entire emotional dead eyes and yeah. was just blank and yeah. be like that was ready for a moment of terror. But... Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, it's it's interesting. Uh, I am just looking up now. Um, um, so, I should also point out, um, just as a as an explanation of things. Uh, she's reading Magnolia Waltz. Um, that is the manga that the manga artist of Utna drew just before dr- drawing Utna. That was her previous work. Oh, so she's just inserting a little bit of her own manga <coughs> into the into the show. Say so we, we know we, you want an omelet. Stop going on with the egg. <laughs> I, I half expected this to happen. Oh, mm-hmm. Smash the shell. Oh my God! What is going on here? I like the the contrast, the black, the yeah. absolute black of the silhouettes. Mm-hmm. Then out of the elevator, the absolute black of the room around this. So like, what? and to that point, if the, the book Demian is a reference, you know, it's, this is the the black of the adult world, as opposed to mm. the light of Utna's world. Okay. All right. So we're establishing that the student <sighs> council doesn't know everything. They're getting messages from end of the world, but they're just kind of following those. And like, they didn't know that the Phantom Castle would appear. They're kind of um, following along. Hmm. Did you? I love how they know class that they go to that they're just playing cards. (laughs) Your point, Brent, with Anthe and Utna's left hands. Mm. I swear, Toga. Toga is Mm -hmm. that the red-haired guy? Yeah. The ring is on his left hand. Oh, let's. And I think it shows blue-haired kid has ring on left hand. Yeah, that definitely is his left hand. That's left hand, and then blue-haired kid. That's you. She has it on her left hand as well. You're right. Rather, you're correct. Exactly. Interesting. I can't see it here. Huh. He had. You could see his when he was holding the. His yeah. Coat. <clears throat> yeah. Well, we, uh, we've established that some of them are wearing on left yeah, hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll see what Utna. I swore when she grabbed the door, though, it was yeah, we'll her check. right hand grabbing the handle and then the droplet. Yeah, hand. yeah. We'll, we'll see. I assume. Okay. Yeah, I'm betting that Which won't be the last also, time we see that. Well, it also could be she is so unusual to this whole thing true that her having the ring on the other hand would be like more you know how strange you're mm-hmm. supposed to wear it on your left yeah so, uh, okay so the goal is to enter the castle and bring revolution to the world whatever that means um and i guess the, the whole egg is... metaphor is cracking the egg the world yeah that's mm-hmm. i mean that's that, that would be the symbol right uh, the mm-hmm. world is the egg, um, and I guess Anthe is the 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 key to get into the Phantom Castle. Hmm. Sounds like it. Yep. yep. But then why didn't Sionji go in? Well, presumably it's it's like <clears throat> it's like time locked that whoever has her at some point will mm, be able okay. to go in. 
I would I would assume. I don't get this. <clears throat> I don't understand why blue haired keep, kid keeps doing the timer. Hmm. Unless what you just said. Oh Being yeah. The Rose Bride, yeah. it's time locked so that there's something about a specific time period or a specific mm. piece of time. Maybe the Rose Bride has to be invested with one of the seal holders for a period of time before oh, the castle point. unlocks. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you must hold the Rose Bride for three weeks and yeah. then you actually get okay. access. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Again, middle school student. <laughs> this is yeah. her here's dorm. Here's your dorm. It's your house. <laughs> that's just a room. It's just, here's your house. Here, here's your manor, my lady. Yeah, with your sculpture garden and your your formal Rococo style, whatever. <laughs> Although, granted, she is literally a princess. Very true. true. So, who knows? They did a really, really great job with that chandelier. Yeah, true. Because um, I've seen I've seen those kinds of chandeliers in different places, and it's like, wow, you actually nailed it all the way through the sort of translucent yeah. glass to see the other side of the actual architecture of the interior. You're right. That's very hard to do. That's yeah. impressive. That's nice. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Okay. Oh, oh, How strange. Everyone starts slow clapping. <laughs> I was going to say, because she stood outside the <clears throat> door and mm -hmm. just had the moment there, and Anthe did all, like, repaired the place in, Guess like, so. five minutes? Okay. Hey. Let's find out. So she just cleaned this... this room that had holes in the walls and, and the ceiling and everything and mm -hmm. your takeaway is oh I thought I was supposed to have a single <laughs> yeah you I suddenly materialized on the left. yeah again you suddenly materialized everywhere and, and okay bye jeez Utna is very good at taking unusual circumstances and taking it in stride okay. yeah. <laughs> bizarrely no. Kidding. I also want to call the detail here of the double bag. Yeah. yeah. She's like double bagged her books, which again, you do. That is a very normal, common thing. But just that little world detail to kind of ground us in the real world is interesting, despite all of the bizarreness happening. Yeah. It's very normal. It makes you feel very normal. <laughs> <laughs> it was the way that she's talking about it that's yeah. a little off putting. That's kind of like. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with me. Hi. Yeah. It's like she's drugged, but she's clearly not. Right. Um, well, also, the, what she just said, I'm engaged to whatever, you know, whoever the student council. Utna's not in the student council. Mm. So, interesting that Anthony wouldn't have a different, like, response to things. Yeah. To be like, hey, you've set me free. I'm away mm -hmm. from the student council. This is this is the scoop. Here's what goes on. Right. Like, huh. Yeah. Um, she has no problem being part of this for some reason. Yeah. Um, in some way. Interesting. Hmm. So, Anthe has just admitted she is doing this because she likes to. And yet she looks clearly not the happiest camper in the world doing this. No. Well, at certain points. Right. Much of the time, she's, you know, fine. Like, when Seonji wasn't yeah. around, she was fine. And when Seonji was there, she cringed a bit, you know, obviously, and it was not a great situation. But otherwise, like, even now, being, you know, engaged to Utna seems fine. That's odd. Wow. I, I guess we have to have a cute, marketable character in every anime. So, here you go. It's the plushie that sells. Yep. It's the plushie. Is it a monkey or is it a rat? Yes. It's a mort. <laughs> I, I think it is both of those things. It's a crabbit. Oh, there yeah. we go. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mole rat. Okay. Uh, no, I think it's a monkey. Just, you know, kind of mouse size monkey ish kind of a thing. I don't know. Again, Anthe is. I'm sorry. The fact that Utna is not screaming in terror right now. Right. Just goes to show how well she takes things. Brain Did you... damage. Yeah. And are we what the whole description of Choo Choo, your pet, my friend. Mm hmm Are we supposed to take from this that Anthe 
really doesn't have any friends. Yeah, probably. That she doesn't look at this as, oh, this is just my cute, you know, plush merch, or merch item. <laughs> this is, my like, my friend, because I don't have any. Mm -hmm. I think you're absolutely right. I did like the detail on the swords, though. They're yeah. Really yeah. nicely detailed. They, uh... Um, and that is actually, I, I came across a uh, Art of Animation page with a whole bunch of like artwork from Utna, and that was like one of the things they like studied and did like a, a test drawing of. So somebody clearly like went and I took a photograph of or sat in front of s these swords and drew them out for that shot. Hmm. And they, the, the love involved shows. Yeah. Look at the, the, the rose carving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, 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 that's incredible. Just... Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. And of course, obviously, also the, the black of adulthood. Yeah. Other thing to call out here, just in terms of uh, character design, the uh, coats here, the, like the formal wear of the student council, definitely seems more like um, uh, French Versailles, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mode. So calling back more to Rosa Versailles and the whole military aspect of that. Uh, so just interesting visual detail. Back to the very normal and I'm sure very functional in, uh, uh, conversation here. Oh, yes. There's going to be slapping. There's just going to be slapping. No, slapping. no. What are you talking about? Why would there be slapping, John? <laughs> why, would why, would, why would there be slapping? Why would there be slapping? What are you at, talking about? At this about? point, it's just a, a level of Morse code between the two. <laughs> 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 Slapping shows love. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Wow, he looked crestfallen for a split second. Yeah. Like, not an emotion he's good with. Wow. Yeah, there was, a, there was a, that moment of... of Resignation, ex almost. Yeah, resignation. And then no. Then violence. And violence. Left, left hand for the ring. Yeah. Again, what an interesting expression. Yeah. Like, the more I think about Anthe and the more I think about her role in all this, that look from above is almost this questioning, this are you going to go through with it, calculating expression. It's interesting. Yeah, as I say, this is a lot, this is quite a shift from her actually tearing up after he hit yeah. her mm -hmm. to this kind of like, you're going to do this because you have to do this. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh. Mm. I don't think Choo Choo exists in any more than a comedic bubble. You know, the way they show Choo Choo and experience Choo Choo, it's, it's like it's like Hammer Space in comedy anime. Uh, yeah. It's just right. there to make you laugh. Not, there's no actual consequence. It's just a random comedy thing. It's so strange. Yeah, especially for this show. Like, yeah. We already <laughs> have... We have Wakaba to do yeah. the random comedy. Why do we need Choo Choo to do more random comedy? I don't know. Other than merch. You were, you were right than, on the yeah, first. Yeah, you were, yeah, I mean, yeah, but still. Mm -hmm. Now that you say that, I wonder if Choo Choo doesn't exist as a almost middle finger to the merchandisers. To say, <laughs> you want a merchandising character? Fine. We'll throw it in there. It'll be the most pointless, you know, side character. It'll have nothing to do with anything. We'll just squash and stretch it for whatever. And fine. Who knows? Yeah, you can sell the little rose seal rings in your trinket shop and this little <laughs> crazy monkey thing. There yeah. you go. Yeah. That was such a fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> I am okay. <laughs> really? No. I am. Yeah. Seriously. And, and in fairness... Um, Anthe has to say that, right? As the Rose Bride, she has right. to go along with whatever their, 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 their person says. So yeah. according to those rules, that is. But I completely agree with you, Steve, that that is the intent behind the words. Yeah. So note how the sagebrush actually has a pillar beneath it. Yep. Right? So all of these are on sticks. Yep. It's literally puppet theater. Interesting. I really would love to know why. Yeah. Just what you know, this is a really interesting visual style to choose to deliver these odd little right. pets. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh -huh. 
Ah. But there's uh, there's someone the controlling everything. Is this the ah. end of the world? Oh, good question. Maybe. Hmm. And what is the cowboy reference? Yeah. Well, dueling, you know. Hmm. Gunslinger. That, Gunslinger. That more yeah. like a Yankee kind of thing to do? That's yeah. like... I don't know. Yeah. A time-plated paradise lost. Mm-hmm. Another time reference. True. And when Sionji was in... was slapping Anthe this last time, mm. the obelisk is acting somewhat like a sundial with interesting uh, signal signs of the zodiac around it yeah so more time related stuff hmm that's a good point so does revolutionizing the world mean turning back time that's a good question and if it's a, if it's symbolism for growing up i wonder if that's where it's going that you when you're approaching adolescence, you're bifurcated between wanting to grow up and wanting to go back to that sort of Edenic childhood, right? That safe yeah. childhood. So maybe the kind of the the thrust is at the end, you can either go forward in time or go back in time. All right. Symbolically right. speaking. Interesting. I do appreciate this sort of animation technique here they're doing where they're reversing the animation. Uh, when Anthony's putting it on Seonji, she's there with the blue rose going in one direction and then when they switch over to anthe uh, with utna it's just reversed but they put a white rose on top of it so it's another mm -hmm. layer just for the rose that they kind of track with her as she goes over and puts it on on utna so they have a one background for sayonji one background for utna and then they kind of um replace the same animation on those backgrounds reversed either way to make it work it's one of those just uh clever you know way of saving a little bit of of animation but making it look different each time so they're doing an interesting thing here which doesn't make sense in terms of actual objective camera usage but kind of tricks the eye notice how the crenellations in the back are moving mm -hmm. very fast behind him um, yeah. as he's running. It's meant to uh, imply that a camera is spinning around him, even though he's not moving, right? But I think our minds are, are so used to those visuals, they're able to marry the two without it feeling weird. Um, it just adds a little dynamism to, to the image. Same thing with Utna. Um, when we see her even more so because she isn't right. even running <clears throat> she's just right. standing there but it's spinning behind her but again it just adds some dynamism to the, to the moment something else they do here is they actually bend the swords as they're coming in so you'll notice there's this you know very strong you know uh, angle to the swords and then when they actually hit they're straight again um, and, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's, it's a classic animation technique of just, just gives you that sense of movement and motion in and just sells the moment. Note also how they're fighting here. Um, Sayonji is just hacking. Yeah. yeah. There's no control, no subtlety. Well, there's control, but there's no subtlety to his movement. He's just trying to knock that sword off of Utna. And Utna is just dodging or, or blocking. Parrying. Yeah, you parry. Power of staggery. <laughs> Power of kick to the gut. Oh, yeah. nice. She cuts him in half. Yeah, I, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Sanji. Why can't they fight with lightsabers? Well, I find it, that kick to the gut yeah. is really interesting and surprising because they have set this entirely up that this is a sword duel. Mm. This is not a melee. Mm -hmm. This is just, you know, the sort of honorable um, yeah. fight where you just, you're, it's all your sword doing the talking, and Seonji, it's kind of your introduction to the fact that, no, mm -hmm. this is an all-out battle. You yeah. can kick, you can punch, you can do whatever you want to yep. get the thing done. Yeah, okay. nobody has stated directly, like, the rule is you can only use your sword. And now right. it's clear that, oh, <laughs> everything's on the table. Absolutely. Yeah.
gotta note the music here. Um, the fact that they go to this very romantic light music, I think is because the whole point of the scene is Utna planned to lose, but she didn't have it in her to lose because presumably she knew what that would do to Anthe. So she's trying to protect her. So now that she's won the duel, she realizes, oh, in my heart, I have this protective desire for Anthe. Well, do you think the, the power descending of Dios mm. was also sort of a she Utna has to do something. Right. We know that. It's mm -hmm. revolutionary girl Utna. Yeah. And that her what she was planning to do not only is that kind of have to go to the side if she's gonna protect Anthe, mm -hmm. but that's not if that was Dios. I don't know who this is descending, yeah, yeah, but he looks yeah. like the mm -hmm. prince. Dios has something going on that she needs to do. Mm -hmm. So at the moment where she's like, Oh damn it, you can see the resolve on her face, yeah. it's like no, no, I need you to win this. Yeah. Dia descends, and it's like, bang, now you don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. Like the Rose Bride yeah. is, you know, mm -hmm. beholden unto who, whoever, you know, wins the duel. You will do as Dios instructs, because I need you to do the thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, mm. Yeah. Or is it just as simple as the fact that maybe you can't do that? Like, you can't intentionally lose, so if you try oh, to do that... Yeah. The prince comes down and goes, "No, I'm going to take over your body to make sure that you legitimately lose or you legitimately win." Yeah. You don't. Maybe. You don't. You don't get to to cop out. Yeah. So this is this is for real, and from everybody's reaction, this has probably not happened before. Right. Yeah. 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 This is yeah clearly different. And to that point, I'm sure no one's tried to lose before. Right. Very true. Everyone's been very focused on uh, revolutionizing the world, whatever that means. Um, yeah, it's it clearly resonated with her ring. Yep. Um, and then the, the this power descended from the castle. Um, it's also interesting that it it represents power. Um, you know, not control, not empathy, not anything else. It's literally the the ability to win the fight appears to be oh, yeah. what 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 happened here. Um. And so decisively, like, it destroys the sword of that Seonji's yeah. carrying. Interesting. Continuity it's issue. When she lets Choo Choo go and she turns and you mm. look on her left hand, there's no ring. And then when she starts talking, oh. there's, a, uh, there's a ring on the left hand again. Let's go back and check that. No ring. That's no ring. ring. Yeah, You're yeah. absolutely right. Great call out. Whoopsie. That's the I'm gonna kill you in your sleep. Yeah, it is really a strange expression to have. It is. Um, and I'll just call out. I'm. I think what Aunt, what Utna means here is because she's so dead set against the whole Rose Bride thing, she can't admit that she's trying to protect Anthe because that means she's okay with the Rose Bride connection. Mm -hmm. So. Choo Choo becomes the intermediary between that, you know. Um, I don't know that Anthe appreciates that, but still. You like my friend better than me? Mm-hmm. Okay. I That's have like such awesome sights to show you. <laughs> I'm gonna murder you while you sleep. Yeah. 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 All right. Episode two of Revolutionary Girl Utana. Mm. Um, how would you contrast episode two to episode one? Would you say you know more? You know less? You know different? I think no different. Um, I, it's it's not that I know more because there's so many questions. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, I mean, we're, we're starting to get a, a coalescing of, of ideas of, of things around the, the Rose Bride. Yeah. And, you know, for that part of it, at least. Um, there is a severe suspension of disbelief that needs to be had <laughs> when you're watching this anime. Um, yeah. Because just, Una is just really either brain damaged or she just really accepts things very, very, very well. Because yeah. that's just weird, a lot of this. Um but I, but I think that you know we're we're starting to get an idea that there is a, a dire event that's supposed to happen. Yeah. And so you know we're we're starting to get that sense, and we're starting to get the sense that <clears throat> there are actual things going on here. Mm -hmm. We don't know what they are yet. Yeah. And, right. and Sayonji is still a jerk. Um, 
no redeeming qualities there. Nope. And um, but yeah, we're not really getting much in the way of answers. No. We are getting a a plushie. With an <laughs> uh-huh. we are like a like a little that. pirate. <laughs> like a little pirate. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. Although we did get a transformation scene of sorts for Utna. Yeah. Yep. And not much of one, but it, it was there. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I, we're we're getting some little snippets of things like, oh, the seal holders. It's mm-hmm. the student council is the seal holders. Well, Utna is not on the student council. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, emphasizes the fact that her as a seal holder, which we know is unusual, makes mm-hmm. Utna special. Yeah. Um, we've learned in this latest Seonji fight that the presumed rules of honorly uh, dueling with swords are not actually the actual rules. Yeah. That you have more options available to you than just crossing blades. You can actually engage in other kinds of combat. Yeah. Um, we also learned the we know council is being kept in the dark about some things. Right. Um, They're being fed information. Which further suggests that maybe the what they think they know about who can or cannot have a rose ring seal is inaccurate. You know, they think they're the chosen ones. Maybe there are more chosen ones than them. Yeah. Also, the, what they're fed, we don't know that they know what the revolution they're asking for is. True. You know, so if they're leaving out, how could how could this strange girl just show up with a seal? Well, how do you know what you're... It's like an egg. We need to crack the shell and bring the world revolution. How do you know what that is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, how much you has know? End of the World told them? Right. And yeah, the fact that's... that they have an entity called End of the World telling them things. <laughs> you know, I mean, that right there should it should concern you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? I mean, do they all, are they do they all think that that they're bringing about as the song goes a Shangri La, or are we talking like, oh, we're gonna bring about forth the flood and hope you have an ark because mm-hmm. you know things are gonna get really really bad. Yeah. So, oh, you know, what is the end of the world? Who is the end of the world? I swear to God, if it's Wakaba, I'm gonna just, <laughs> just, uh, just lose my mind. We've talked about it a lot of times before, and it. It was a seminal event in Japan. Mm. Could the end of the world literally be, since they're all in military-styled uniforms, can this be the student the student protests again? Oh, interesting. Could the end okay. of the world be stopping this regimented, rigid yeah. style of controlling students and that things are so locked down and you know a nice tight little boxes you can't go outside of that and at the end of the world this great revolution is the student yeah. uprising mm-hmm. and that they're looking to overturn the entire system that is set up to you know oppress students right. and that Utna will break through and bring a change in the system because a lot of these animators I'm presuming were alive or at least the kids of people who've been through that right to have known about a student revolution. That's a great point. I don't know. Yeah. We've talked about it in so many other places where it mm-hmm. couldn't fit, but I don't know whether that could fit here. I have no idea. Yeah. No, I like that. Um, it also makes me think of like the Great Contra Earthquake, where that broke the world, uh, you know, at least Tokyo, but it was also a means of rebuilding and modernizing. Right. And it sort of, you know, swept away a lot of old buildings allow them to build with you know new technologies and, and new things and become more modernized. Um, so I wonder if there's that symbolism in it as well, that yes, it is destructive, but it's ultimately a cleansing destruction? Right. Don't know. Maybe, maybe it's bringing about the end of this world and this beautiful place and, and the sea and everything's going to get knocked down and then we're going to discover that it's actually the bottom of the hull of a ship, and there's going to be this thing that comes down from the sky. Oh, no, wait, that's... Uh, that's uh, Angel's egg. Yeah. Angel's egg, yeah. Uh, sorry. Would not surprise me at all. <laughs> no. Actually. If, like, it's literally an egg. And we zoom back yeah. out. Um, well, I also want to call out to that point the unreality of this world the how staged everything is how 
oddly everything i mean going back to i'll see if i can find it um where did they show the um the student council there it is like i i'm sorry that's not very convenient no <laughs> you know who puts their table a hundred yards away from the door can you imagine the staff of that building? They're right. just like going, oh, God, these little brats. we got to pull the table out all the way out. Why do they, why? Why do they hate us? Just the, the scale of everything is so out of proportion to, yeah. to things. Uh, even, so, even Anthea Newton is, you know, dorm room has yeah. massive space between each wall. We know what college dorm rooms look like. Yeah. No, especially in Japan. Right. Well, here's the other part of this, is that mm. the only adult that we have seen in these two episodes has been the one teacher for comedic effects with the Switch. You're right. True. Yeah. And there, and there's there's mention of, well, if you don't do the duel, then the head of the school is going to make you disappear. Mm. Not leave the school, but, like, disappear. Like, you know, yeah. like, there's actually a unmarked grave in <laughs> underneath those trees there, right? That has your name on it if you don't do this. Yeah. But, you know, we don't have... You know, we see no adults walking around. So I'm kind of wondering no. about your point about how, you know, the, dark, the student council is adulthood and everything. Mm -hmm. So we're purposely not really seeing adults for a reason, I guess. Yeah. I mean, even in, to say. even in class, it's always before and after, you know, a, a teacher yeah. comes into the, the classroom. You're right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it is almost like this bubble that they're living in. And can you imagine just being the caretaker of that forest, yeah, and, like know. walking out, you know, with, with the push cart with the leaves and everything, yeah. and just as you know, Uno walks past you, go, girl, you're gonna be in some trouble now. You know, it's just going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The fountain cleaners when Udna walks up to open the door. No, I'm not done scrubbing. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's the third time this week. Yeah. Look before you open the door. Look. <laughs> How does how does the student council get to the to the dueling platform? Because Utna has to take a way. long walk. And, yeah. Well, but when she op operates the door, the whole thing oh, like, unscrews and it's like yeah. it stacks up and it does the whole dr dramatic thing. Is, are the we going to go through... up there already? Zipline, <laughs> I guess. Are, are, does each person have their own dirge song as they go up the stairs? <laughs> I mean, different, they, they took a different a, door. There's a student council <laughs> helicopter. And it just takes them from uh, here yes, yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that or maybe they just get on the platform before Utna shows up. And then right. it's like it's on ground level. And mm -hmm. then when Utna shows up, they're like, uh, watch this. Turn on the elevator thing. Yeah. And then it just, <laughs> it just extends all the way up. And Utna takes like a 15 minute walk of a thousand stairs. <laughs> like, <laughs> Brent, as I'm watching this, as she's going up the spiral mm. staircase, I was thinking to myself how at Gen Con we had to keep going up and down the bleachers in the yes. oil. Yes. And I'm like thinking to myself, like, like I felt my heart was going to like burst out of my chest by the time I get up at the top there. I can just only imagine, like, if I was doing this, I like, get at the top of the duel, I'll be like, get away. <laughs> no, the duel starts now while you're exhausted. Ah, ah! Like, there are no rules. Yeah. Anthony, just no, 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 no. Rule of dueling club. Anthony, not now. You know. <laughs> Anthony, I'm too kind of tired to catch you if you fall over with the sword thing coming out of your... Oh, jeez, she's on the floor now. All right. Uh, I'm still intrigued by the symbolism of the duel about pulling out the sword from Anthe. Um, and just, I mean, the, the fairly obvious, uh, you know, concept of the let's just say male shaped object right mm. yeah um and the the concept of using kind of male power in this moment uh I don't know if i'm reading too much it's into very, it it's very sensual the yeah. removal process mm -hmm. yeah um, brian shogun did it better i agree yeah. um but it is it the is part they never show us though is when she puts the sword back in true oh yeah. that's gotta hurt 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I wasn't ready yet. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, does the sort of Dios just vanish? I wonder. Hmm. The, didn't, didn't Sionji drop it in the, fr yeah, the first so. episode yeah, yeah. of Duel and it disappeared? So I think mm -hmm. it does. Did I think when you're no. done... Because he cut the sword. No, maybe he didn't. I don't think so. Because once he cut the kendo sword, that was she. She had struck his rose, so he didn't drop the sword. I don't know. I don't know how you get the rose sword back in. You see, I, I can just imagine that you just. It's a uh, very uh, awkward uh, move. Impossible! I, I lost. Uh, okay, he sits down. And yeah. he... You seem upset, Seonji. Classmate. <gasps> this is an unexpected development. I think she's in the middle school. Oh, yes. Baby. You've lit the fire in my heart. Oh. Okay, yeah, no. We, we never see it. Creepy. Um... <laughs> Oh, I, I yeah, can just baby. see like an awkward movement of just like holding the palm. Okay, Anthony, just hold. St it's to the left. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. oh God, I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, you're a bleeder. You're a bleeder. Oh no, I'm so yeah. sorry. <laughs> you just cut Anthony in half. I was trying to get the sword in. What do you want me to do? It doesn't go in that way. I'm gonna guess that. Yeah, that must be the mechanic of it. Like when you're done the duel, it has to just, I guess, dematerialize. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So by the way. Uh, mm. Tago, is that is that the red hair guy's name? Uh, Toga. Toga. Where is he viewing this from? Good question. Because um, we is see him... Is he up him... in the castle? Is Where is he? Because I, I well, don't he's, see a structure. He... Yeah, he's not in the castle because we see him from quite a far distance away. Let's see if we can... Do it. <laughs> I think we see it. That was in the first episode. Let me go back to that one. Yes, that was the part where he says yes, baby. And you yeah. see it's like a distance. From After him. all, you prints on a white. Ah. Oh, this. Ah. Ah. This is an unexpected no, development. They don't show it, actually. I think she's in the middle school. Oh, yes. Baby. No, wait, right after this. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Right okay. there. Yeah. So he's definitely... Okay, so... He, he's definitely yeah, not he in the castle. He... He's some distance away. Um, I think this is the student council chamber somewhere. <coughs> so they can but, see but, but, in there? You're, you're right. How could he see inside from the student council chamber? That's a great yeah, question. Where the, is he? The tree dome yeah. covers the area. Yeah. He's not with the bells, because the bells look like they're on the other side. Yeah. And where are the bells? Huh. Uh, um, maybe he's in the entrance thing. Mm. Yeah. The, the whole entrance complex with the, uh, the, the interlocking rows and such. Weird. Mm. Interesting. That's a great question. He's just and... looking at convenient plot space. <laughs> well, it also implies that m other folks can go into there without having to do it. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. So the forest grants entrance to observers besides just the duelists. Hmm. Hmm. Because, you know, if, if I were Sanji and being a, a jerk, I would, like, get in there really early. Yeah. douse the whole place with gasoline and as soon as charges just flick a match and take anything and just you know dd mal out of there just just let the whole thing burn <laughs> given say ong i think he would catch on fire first true true yeah <laughs> and then go up running towards Utna. Oh, you, you will burn in hell oh, no. <laughs> Yeah. And Anthony just goes, oh, well, this was preordained, I guess. Right. Yeah. What? No. Fine. What? Burning to death couldn't happen to a better man. Mm. <laughs> uh, I've been looking it up. I cannot tell authoritatively in Japan which hand they wear the rings on. Um, mm. The wedding rings. Uh, some, folks, some sources say left, some sources say right. So a quick Google does not confirm. Um, gotcha. That'd be an interesting question. Like, is this 
like a wedding band ring or is it just a you know ceremonial a signet ring, ring. signet yeah. ring yeah signet ring you know um <laughs> the art of canley is alive and well yeah. <laughs> so then the question becomes oh sorry uh, flood warning. Oh. Oh. Jeez. Yeah, flood warning here in Baltimore. Wonderful. Okay. All right. Message from end of the world. What? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna die by flood. Yes. Um. Um. What's your view on? Um. How symbolic do you think this world is? Do you think they're in a real world? Or is this all just symbols being assembled for us? Right? Um, do, you, do you think Ikuhara is just... Do you think these are all literally just you know, uh, puppets on sticks? Basically. Oh god! If it's a snow globe, that would just make me angry. <laughs> um, so here's the thing. So, so, yeah. so here's the thing. In episode two, we see not just the stick puppet theater mm. of the shadows. We actually see a person with an a hand. That's true. And is moving. Yeah. We do hear more than one voice, though, for mm -hmm. for that. Um, so this could be. Um, architects of the story like they they kind mm -hmm. of like are guiding the story along and it's not so much for us but for the people that they're manipulating this mm -hmm. might be a, a manipulation thing like true this may not just be just them playing with with shadow puppets this may be them saying here's the story this is how we're going to set it up and by the way here's some cryptic details we're going to give you and you know that that kind of thing because they're really kind of zeroing in on utna uh, and saying you don't understand, You're, this is going to be difficult for you, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So they seem to know what's what's going on here, and I'm assuming yeah. that's end of the world. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that this is an actual world. Like I don't think okay. this is symbolic. I think that mm -hmm. this force thing exists. I think that it, it is a there, this is a magical world. What I do think is that people in this world sort of acknowledge that these things happen but it's on a level that they're just like okay i don't need to worry about it mm. so i'm just going on with my life mm -hmm. and there's some people that do need to worry about this and okay. so yeah. that's that, that that's on them yeah. so i think there's a tacit understanding that if it doesn't involve me i don't really care mm -hmm. not care but it just you know i'm not going to be yeah you know like what well, you're not going to say wakaba you know running up there with like a, a butter knife trying to duel anybody <laughs> you know? well in episode seven <laughs> yeah the butter knife chronicle <laughs> um, yeah i mean i think there's very evidently deep symbolism and a lot of things that are going on in this and and somehow they're connected to things far and wide in reality and maybe even not but um it certainly feels like this is a a real world with cat characters inhabiting that world and as odd as it is yeah <laughs> you know? yeah um i, I, I agree I, I, I find the casual magic to be curious like yeah. you know steve you're saying where it's like you know that just they're okay with it, they don't think anything about it it's like yeah. obviously getting into the arena involves an element of magic yeah right i mean the obvious of pulling a sword from a person's chest is a uh, magic Mm -hmm. But nobody else seems to... This is like a regular kind of school. Nobody well, else really seems to be all that magically concerned. I also wonder if it isn't just a fairy tale world, right? It, it operates according to fairy tale logic, where it's like, we live in this world, it is a real world for us, but there's a giant tree on the campus. You know, people go in it and go out of it. And there are strange magical things in this world. They exist. We know they exist. It doesn't you know affect me directly um maybe right. it will someday and those are just the, the that's the logic of this world maybe mm -hmm. that those things happen um hard well to given say. that utna doesn't really like flip out when she sees a sword pulled from another, another yeah. classmate chest mm -hmm. that sort of kind of says that not only is she resilient in her response to really weird stuff mm -hmm. 
but maybe that's a response of like, oh, yeah, that's a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, this, well, this well, is also keep this in is mind not that... unusual. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also let me get my let that... me get my wallet out here. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Well, also think of it this way: that she is an actual princess in this story. It's, it's, True. it's like she is a princess, and people yeah. just take that for granted. But she's being treated like a normal person. Mm-hmm. So, are not that everybody's a princess, but maybe there are a lot of princesses. Yeah, out there, mm-hmm. you know. So this is a common occurrence thing. You know, it's, it's kind of like saying. You know, oh, we have the rich person on campus. Well, you know, there's a lot of rich people, but you know, yeah. maybe that's just kind of a, a level that 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 she is at, True. and maybe I'm I'm kind of thinking about this like, well, there might be casual magic that quite a few people know about. Maybe a lot of people don't know about it. Maybe, but the end of the world is is about mm. cluing everybody in. Yeah, and, good point. Uh, you know, kind kind of a thing, and you know, we're gonna have a massive apocalyptic event where Utna is, is gonna go. Anthony, as the the thing disappears <laughs> in her hands, like, like an Akira. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe the, the power of Dios, Dios will go into all of you. You know, yes. maybe she's passing on the power of Dios to all of humanity. Um, and maybe they will we'll always be... use that incredible magic power responsibly. Yes. Oh no, it'll end the world. Yeah. <laughs> totally end the world. They're bringing about Mecha Pope. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty exactly. much. Um, uh, this is a couple years after Evangelion, so I, again, I don't know how this ends, but I am prepared for right. an Evangelion <laughs> ending. He could, he could very well pull that off, or pull it off. He could very well do it. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if it'll be a, be pulled off or not. Uh, hard to say. Um, well, that's episode two of Utna. <coughs> Definitely further developments. Um, yes. Actually, I do want to point out and call out, I appreciate that there's a different ending to the duel this time with more information. It wasn't yeah. just another duel with Seonji that she wins. There's there's more to the world building in this episode. Which, thank you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, episode two of Utna. Hey. Hey, I'm still confused. <laughs> Welcome back. I hope you found that useful. Good news, I went out and put up a fence around the garden area with a gate, and I did plant the seeds, so hopefully that will bear fruit, or I guess vegetables, uh, sometime soon, and some flowers and various things. But this got me thinking a bit about growing up. Um, There's something about gardening that's kind of contemplative, and if you'll forgive the kind of overstretched metaphor, we do kind of plant the seeds of who we want to be when we grow up. And then we watch as those seeds grow and we see how it works out. Not always under our control, but we kind of do the best there. We do have to put a fence around that as well to kind of protect our ideals and protect ourselves in the world, but with a gate as well, uh, so we remain open to outside influences. You don't want to be too insular, right? So I don't know. I just kind of like that metaphor for growing up. Maybe, maybe Utna is uh, influencing me already. Anyway, that'll do it for today. Thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, until next time, watch more anime. <laughs>